So in this continuing series on managing neuropathic pain in dogs and cats, we're going to talk about cabinol or CBD oil. And the main reason for talking about this is that it's a very common question that I get from owners uh, wanting to give their dogs a more natural substance rather than some of the drugs um, that uh, have been prescribed for their pet. So what is cabinol? Uh, well, it's produced from hemp or marijuana plants, um, which are depicted uh, here in this little ca cartoon. Um, cannabis itself contains many hundreds of uh, uh, phytocabinoids, including THC, which is the main psychoactive compound of that plant, and CBD. Um, when you uh, purchase that CBD oil, what it is doing is it's mimicking the endocabinoids in your body. These are produced little neurotransmitter molecules that are produced in uh, many, many organs, um, but importantly in the brain, spinal cord and peripheral nervous system. And they have an important role in regulating pain. And they also have other roles in reducing inflammation and uh, affecting the immune system. So these uh, molecules will bind to receptors in the brain, that most notably the CB1 receptor or cabinoid 1 receptor, and also the CB2 receptor. The most important one in the brain is the CB1, and it's located in many areas, uh, up and uh, down descending and ascending pain pathways, and but in particular the dorsal horn, the dorsal nerve root ganglion, and the trigeminal ganglion. And so doing, it can influence those pain signals coming into the nervous system. And what it does is it modifies the release of neurotransmitters from these pain neurons. Um, and that and it also affects the other down regulatory compounds, the opioid and serotonin receptor. And these are all G proteins, which basically mean uh, these receptors are G proteins, which means that they affect intracellular processes. So quite a, a com complicated system. And it would be useful um, if we could find a, a, a compound that affected and downregulated these systems because they would work in synergy with many other painkillers. However, uh, giving accurate advice for caregivers is really hampered by very variable preparations, very variable bioabsorption. You know, CBD actually isn't absorbed very well. Um, in t uh, if you take it as an oral form into the gut, it's absorbed better uh, if it's dissolved in fat. And, and that's why, um, not that I'm recommending it, but that's why people smoke it, because that's another way of getting it into your, into your system. Um, obviously, we don't uh, want either humans or dogs or cats to be smoking it. Uh, so it has very uh, a variable bioavailability, very... Um, variable pharmacokinetics, and there is a real paucity of robust scientific studies. And the conclusion from that is that there is evidence that suggests that there is a benefit for chronic pain, not necessarily neuropathic pain. Uh, the, the studies of neuropathic pain haven't been done at all. But the quality of that evidence is poor, unfortunately. So as I've said before, absorption is improved in oil or fatty food and the dose of CBD for pain is 0.25 to 3 milligrams per kilogram every 12 hours. Well, that is, is the recommend dose, uh, dose for pain based on the published papers. Actually, a recent paper that looked at CBD oil for epilepsy found that they needed to give at least 9 milligrams per kilogram per day. Now, what that basically means is that if you were to give 0.25 mg per kg to a 10 kilogram dog, then they would need to have 0.7 mils a day of high quality 70 mg per mil preparation. Now, some bottles that you can buy actually only contain 60 mg. And that's what I mean by these highly variable preparations. However, very recently, the uh, food a standards agency have absolutely slashed the recommended dose for healthy adult humans. It was a, it was 70 mgs a day, which is you know um, uh, very similar to the dogs here. 
but now they've slashed it to 10 milligrams of uh, CBD a day. That's only 0 0.15 milligrams per kilogram of four to five drops of a 5% CBD oil solution. And the reason for that is concern about long term effects on the liver and thyroid gland. The adverse effects are dose dependent, so they can cause gastrointestinal upset. That may be the oil um, and uh, maybe more likely in cats. It can cause hypersalivation, again, more likely in, in cats. Lethargy, sedation. Um, it, it does require detoxification by the liver. And if you're going to give it at, uh, at a reasonable dose, then you do need to monitor those liver enzymes and the liver function, especially in cats, uh, because cats have um, uh, a much more simple liver. They're obligate carnivores uh, and they're, as such, their liver is, is not as uh, able to detoxify things uh, compared to omnivore dogs and, and humans. Um, there has been no uh, data on thyroid function in dogs and cats, but there is concern about thyroid function in, in humans. So I've put that in there. Products with um, THC, not surprisingly, since it's the psychotropic uh, uh, part of the, the uh, um, molecule, um, are much more likely to cause adverse signs. And uh, most CBD oil products actually claim to be THC three, but it is important to check that. And you do need to obey your country's or your state's legal and prescribing regulations, because in some countries it's not permitted to have CBD oil at all. So I want to put the molecules up here that I made really to show you that um, uh, cabin oil has these two aromatic rings in it which really means that it has to be broken down. This bit has to be separated by the liver. And that's why it is uh, uh, you need to monitor liver functions. And I find it somewhat ironic that people are much uh, more prone to give CBD oil because they have this perception that it's safer compared to the gabapentinoids. This is, this is gabapentin and this is pregabalin. But actually, the gabapentinoids do not require to be metabolized by the, the liver and they're excreted by the kidney unchanged. Importantly, CBD oil will compete with other drugs using the liver cytochrome 450 pathway. And most importantly is phenobarbital. Not that we're using phenobarbital for neuropathic pain very commonly, uh, but um, if uh, the CBD oil is being used for epilepsy, then the dog may or the cat may well be on phenobarbital as well. It's important to know the legal status. Obviously, um, from my accent, you can tell that I come from the UK. Um, and so I'm interested in the legal status of CBD in Great Britain. And our veterinary medicine directive consider CBD oil a veterinary medicine. And that means that the products require a marketing authorization or a license before they can be sold or supplied in the UK, which means that under Cascade, a vet, a UK vet can only prescribe either an authorized human product um, because there's no veterinary hum product as yet. Um, and uh, the legal state in the UK says that CBD uh, products must be authorized. And this is the current list. This is how to find it here. This is the website. Um, and actually, the current list is not yet authorised. They're all still going through the process. And if it's not on the list, then the product should not be on the market in, the, in, in Great Britain. And therefore, your vet cannot uh, legally prescribe it. And a vet can also prescribe an unauthorized formulation which has been compound by a veterinary specials manufacturer. So that is somebody, uh, 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 an organization that will produce the CBD oil. Um, and that's my preferred route, but I, I am currently finding that challenging to obtain, but hopefully that's a situation that will, that will change. Um, so if you're asking your vet to help you with this, they may find this a little bit tricky. So my conclusions, and I know this is probably the unpopular choice, and I'm going to invite lots of comments of people say, but I give it to my pet and it's it's doing great. Well, that's that's great for you. But I find it very difficult to recommend based on the current recommendation. 
I find it difficult to know what is an effective but safe dose for neuropathic pain. And you have to bear in mind that just because it came from a plant doesn't mean that it's benign. And when it's given it as an effective dose, it seems to me that the adverse effects are greater than the more usual off-label medication like pregabalin. And we have concerns about safety, especially if it's combined with other medication or given lifelong. And some of these animals are on lifelong medication, which really questions its potential benefit as an add-on therapy. And, so, and it can be tricky for vets to source and prescribe a legal preparation. Hopefully this is a changing market and uh, I'm going to be able to update you in the future because it's certainly uh, something that many people are looking at and perhaps some other uh, companies are going to produce uh, a product which is a good evidence base. Until then, bye-bye.